and I notice that our Kimberly blogger is going to come and chat with us, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of information about what's going on with the league, his power rankings, etc. I'm sure. And uh, in the past, this has been called the the Bloggers Corner, but correct. But I want to change the name of this segment. I want to call it <laughs> Bloggers Blurb. Bloggers Blurb. 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 Let's do it. I'd like the alliteration. <laughs> Coach's <laughs> Corner, Nitro's <laughs> Night, Bloggers, Bloggers Blurb. Blurb. Okay. Take it under advisement. Josh okay. Lockhart, our blogger, uh, joining us here in the, in the booth. Well, thanks the for having period. me. Uh, you know, it's been about a year since you and I have started doing this. Or We did it in last year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I might actually grab that because it was, anyway, it was fun. The, not that it's not fun right now, but it was fun the first time around experimenting. So... Um, I'm just going to say this game started off fun, <laughs> and it's not fun anymore well, for Kimberly fans. Well, again, the Dynamiters got off to a quick start. They yes, a they did. Goal. They were on. They were on top of the uh, the uh, Nighthawks uh, in the first couple of minutes. Uh, Miller scored that quick goal. Then they took a power play, and and it didn't take long for the uh, the Beaver and Nighthawks to get their get their bus legs out of the yes. way. And, and uh, all night long until Colopillo had his little um, set to uh, with Yurik, uh, Yuris, I should say. Um, the Dynamiters were a half a stride um, behind yes. uh, the Nighthawks. They picked up some energy from that tussle. Uh, they started using more physical play, but they gave up a couple of uh, opportunities, and the, and the Nighthawks uh, took advantage. Mm -hmm. I also wonder if the Nighthawks are sending a message because telling Kramer. Uh, their goalie has been a player of the month and honorable player of the month for the Kootenai Conference. Uh, didn't even get a mention this go around. Uh, and Campbell was the Kootenai Conference player of the month. So I just wonder if this is a bit of a clinic in that regard of if you think you have the league's top goalie, let's show you. So that's I, I honestly wonder about that a piece bit as of well. A incentive for, yeah. for the Nighthawks. Uh, well, I mean, if you look at stats, um, I think Kramer has, has the better stats, 1.61 goals against. And more, over more time. Exactly. And, and, uh, but I think uh, the Dynamiters can't blame uh, Cody Campbell for, no. for the score. Uh, they've been slopping their own end, giving away the puck in their own zone, um, letting I don't know how many uh, odd man rushes where the, the Nighthawks are extremely skilled and getting the puck to an open end and, and getting clear shots on, on Campbell. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for Cam Campbell, this would be 10 or 11 to 1. Oh, easily. And this is really a surprising score line, given the two teams that we have. Uh, now, my power rankings are from just before the, um, the league started back up, uh, after the holiday break. And the Beaver Valley Nighthawks were number two, and the Nitros were number three. So you'd expect this to be a little bit more of a closer game. And when you think that the two teams combined... Um, I think they score, or, or not score, they allow uh, like four point, it was like six goals or something like that, like just under five goals. So we're already at seven goals through two periods of play. So this is, this is one of those statistical outlier nights where you just, and it's very true, where you, the moment the puck drops, all the stats don't matter. Um, that's but why they play the game. That's why, exactly, that's why it's played, because uh, this is one of those outlier nights that makes, for me makes no sense statistically for either team. I have to wonder if the, if the game was being played at the Kimberley Civic Center, if the, the result would be the same at this point. Yeah. Um, both teams are, are playing on this arena, so it's not as if one, one team has an advantage. Although the Kimberley Dynamiters at home are a tough, a tough team to beat, they're actually on the road to, to Cranbrook uh, playing at the Memorial Arena. Th their whole um, routines have to be totally different than they would be normally Absolutely. on a home game. So I don't know if yeah. that has any impact on, on hockey players, uh, but I'm going to use that as an excuse for them. I, I totally would as well. It, I know I don't look like an athlete, but in my younger years, <laughs> that routine before a game or in before, well, mind you, I was more in track, but still when I did basketball, uh, it's that routine beforehand is massive. And then all of a sudden, if you change that, like just think of our morning, all of us that go to work, Monday to Friday or whatever our schedule may be, we have a certain routine in the morning of getting coffee, getting up, reading the paper. If you throw that off, it may throw off the entire day. So I. I do wonder about that. And again, it's it's a uh, home game has a different routine, and away games have a, a routine. Yeah. So the Nighthawks would be in their normal away 
a weight mm -hmm. gain routine, whereas the Dynamiters may be different. But having well, said yes. that, uh, the Dynamiters have not really been in this hockey game. The the Beaverdale Nighthawks, uh, Nighthawks, all over them. Yes. Um, and so the Dynamiters, uh, they want to make this game respectable. Uh, they're five goals down. Uh, they still have an opportunity to get back in the game. Uh, we've seen comebacks before, uh, but against the Beaver Night Beaver Valley Nighthawk team that's playing so well. Uh, it's going to be hard, but we can but they play like they, they did the yeah. last 10 minutes of that second period, and, and they can make this game respectable. Absolutely, but we're definitely seeing why the Nighthawks are number one in the league, and why they went on, I think it was about a 15-game winning streak. They're, they're definitely showing that right now, that you do not mess around with them, and if you play them softly, they'll make you pay. And they get out of their zone really well. Yeah. And the Dynamiters are on an eight-game winning streak. Um, which it's looks true. Like it might come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and one seventeen at home. So not discounting those, but overall, the the Nighthawks are not a team to mess with. No. So number two on, on your power rankings, I'm guessing no Soyuz. Uh, number one, sorry, was the Soyuz. Oh, and number two was the Nighthawks. Okay. Three was Kimberly. Um, but what I wanted to pull up was um, I, I did much more recently the clutch scores where I look at uh, power play goals, power play assists, shorthanded goals, shorthanded assists, and then game winning goals. And the Dynamiters have no one on the top 25 of that list. Um, now mind you, a lot of their scoring that they rely on has been recently added to the team and they score by committee. Yep. So and it's, it's interesting. The Nighthawks do the same thing as well. I was yes. doing some stat checking myself, and their top scorer, Nolan Percival, is 29th in scoring. Yeah. Uh, in the league. The, yes, they, they, they've got about nine, eight, nine players that are around that one point a game mark. So they yep. score by community as well. However, uh, Dylan Hepler, who's I believe second in scoring on their team, he is their number number two. He's one point behind uh, Percival. Gotcha. He's number five on this list because he scored seven power play goals and 10 power play assists. Uh, so putting him, yeah, fifth on the list. So he, uh, he relies heavily on the man advantage for collecting his points. And that was shown tonight. He scored the, the power, first power play goal for the, uh, mm -hmm. the Nighthawks in that first period. The first goal? First goal, yes. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was 18, but they have 18 there, 16 here. And <laughs> we, we, had, we had it verified by an outside source because we did change it from I 16 checked. to 18. Okay. But then it was changed back to 16 from an outside source. So okay. I'm going by... I, I checked the score sheet. It said 18, but again, these it can change by the end of the night after the coach looks at it. So Indeed. whatever, but... We, we got <laughs> Yes. Uh, but I know he's he's if he didn't get the goal, he got a helper on the goal. So that's... Uh, just shows uh, for him as well. The other player that the Nighthawks have on this list is Kyle Hope, which I, he's not one of their top three scorers, um, but he he's more uh, known for his short-handed goals. He's got three of those. Well, he's got 13 goals as well for, for the Nighthawks, so yeah, uh, three of them short-handed. So, but we're, obviously a special teams player. Yes, and he's he has four game-winning goals to his name, mind you. So does Hepler, but. Uh, so those are their two in terms of clutch when they've when they've got either a man advantage or they're down a man or needing that game winning goal uh hepler and hope are their two players well i think the dynamiters uh have had they've had some opportunities in the power play tonight uh and the beaver valley nighthawks penalty killing which this year so far penalty killing away they're number two they're 24 percent mm -hmm. um and, or excuse me they're third, 80, 86% um, PK. So they're a very, very good uh, penalty killing team, and they showed that tonight. They've, yeah. they've killed off um, the five power plays that the Dynamiters have had. Uh, they'll get a Dynamiters will get a short power play here in the third period, but uh, an excellent PK team, good Absolutely. skating team, and, and that's that's the big thing. Well, yeah, and th this is where so they remind me of the Nashville Predators of old, where they're built from the back out, where they've got a stellar goalie, solid defenseman that you don't want to mess with, and then score by committee, and that for me is how the Nighthawks look like they're they're built. Is they they've got Kramer and Nett, who's spectacular and we've watched him just swallow the puck tonight um, and their def their defensemen aren't point produ or massive point producers but they're players you don't want to mess with but they uh, they're they're good on the in the defensive yeah. zone 
And if you recall, the last couple of years, the Dynamiters uh, basically had the same same philosophy, yeah. s same formula, where they had uh, Tyson Brower in, in that they had probably the best defensive core in, in the KIHL. They, did. they also had, had a lot of offensive power. And they yes. had guys like Jason Richter and Eric Buckley yeah. that could put the puck in the net. So yeah. uh, they were built from the back out uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's what that uh, most teams would like to do. Yes. Defense first and then and pick up some, some offensive players. And having said that, the Dynamiters this year have picked up a number of, of players that are going to help them down the stretch. Not the least of which is the, the newest player, Cooper Page. Yes. Uh, they got from... Okotoks. Can well, Okotoks? He, he was traded to the Calgary Mustangs, but didn't report there, but last played with the uh, Okotoks Oilers. And yeah. uh, he looks good in, in, mm -hmm. on the faceoff, uh, and I've seen him play, make a couple of really nice, heady plays. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to be a solid addition to the Dynamiters. But they also picked up Karpishan, who's a gritty player. They picked up Herringer, who can put the puck in the net. Um, Carrillo, who's, who's been probably the number one Dynamiter scoring mm -hmm. uh, in the last probably a couple of three weeks. Yeah. Uh, so they look pretty good, uh, notwithstanding tonight's game. Correct. And Carrillo, I believe he received an honorable mention for Player of the Month for the Kootenai Conference. Right. So yes, he's been he's been playing well. Uh, you totally did. So with that roster move, though, this is something that we'll, we'll have to pay attention to. Uh, that puts the Dynamiters at 24 players on their roster. On January 10th, they have to cut down to 23. So it'll be interesting to see what happens um, this coming weekend and then early next week. And, and the other thing, and, and I'm not going to use this as an excuse, but the Dynamiters are missing four starters uh, yes. tonight that due to suspension. Yes, they are. Um, George Bertoia at the back end. He's a he's a stalwart, stay-at-home kind of defenseman. Um, you've got Riz, uh, Rizden's out. Rizden's uh, another. He's a young guy, uh, but he's out for a couple of games because he had a, a five-minute major kneeing penalty. Yep. Uh, you've got Gareth Osmer, number 17. Uh, who Wicked is just shot. A bull. Yes. He's just a bull. And, and uh, Devin Langridge, uh, also uh, a suspension. A gritty all, player. All yep. having to do with, with a, uh, a line brawl in Fernie with... Less than a minute to play in, in the, the last yeah, game. Thirty seconds, even. Yeah, I believe that the, the scoring thing said nineteen Two seconds. seconds. Yeah, um, and uh, a line brawl, um, and that was unfortunate because I, apparently, and I didn't see the game, but apparently it was against um, the the play of the game. It was a, a really good game. Yeah. Um, oh, it totally then, was. Then Mitch Titus got hurt, uh, which, uh, from what I'm told, was an inadvertent collision yeah. with uh, Franco Colapello. Correct. Um, and then. Um, no penalty was called, and, and apparently that was the right non-call. Uh, but the Fernie Ghost Riders took it into their hands to say, "Okay, um, yeah. we're not going to let our best player get get hurt uh, without some retribution, regardless of the fact that that it was unintentional." Yeah. Now, depending on who you talk to, Fernie yes, felt indeed. it was uh, not inadvertent and a little bit more of a cheap shot, according to their their blog po uh, blogger. Well, when you when you but, take a look at the player that was involved, Franco Colapello. Yeah. Who has, from our perspective, it makes and well, I mean, if, and even if you talk yes. to the to the players on the on the Fernie Ghost Riders, Colapello is not somebody that that takes a lot of penalties uh, in the at last all. Two years, he might have twenty minutes in penalties for the two years. If that, although yes. tonight he picked up fifteen. <laughs> yes, for, he did. With a fight. <laughs> so he's not helping our case here. <laughs> but but, but yeah. Colapello's fight tonight, I think, had had more to do with with the idea of, of getting his teammates fired up. Yes, uh, and I think as a, as a veteran player. That was, uh, and I, to be honest, I didn't see it start. It was in a corner that we don't have very good vision on. But it appears to me that that's kind of what, what a, a veteran player wanted to do, just get his guys fired up because he knew that, uh, that yeah. River Valley was, was a stride ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, so I think, but having said that, uh, he's not a player that's going to go out and try to injure somebody. No. Nope. Um, and from what I understand from the people that, that were at the game that I've talked to, they said um, Colapello saw it at the last second. He braced himself. Apparently, Titus never saw it coming, yeah. and he got smoked. And yeah. Unfortunately, that, that was an injury, but from what I understand, um, it's one of those bumps. It's not, not an injury that's going to keep him out of the, out of the lineup. Yeah, and it's, for me, it's one of those moments where you could get creamed hard, and you just bounce back up, or it's going to, when it's inverted like that, when you get hit hard, uh, you just bounce back up, or it's one of those ones that will take you out for a little bit. So, yeah, it's unfortunate what happened. And then, yeah, Fernie decided to do the policing themselves. I know uh, Stewart did try to appeal the suspensions, and he got Sturzer back um, because he was suspended for uh, one, one game. game, and that was rescinded. But he tried, he appealed, I 
think all the the fighting ones because he felt uh, from his perspective that it wasn't um, a, a, a line brawl it was more the Fernie started pouncing on Kimberly and Kimberly answered and, uh, so. and, and I was talking to uh, coach Stewart today uh, or uh, coach Stewart today and Apparently, the rule says that if there's an instigator of a melee, mm -hmm. then the team that instigated the, the fights yep. would get suspensions where the team that was defending themselves yep. wouldn't get... They'd get fighting majors, yes, but they wouldn't get suspensions. Yeah. And that was the, the basis of their appeal, but it was denied. Yes, uh, it was. <laughs> for, and obviously, the league has their reasons for, for making their decisions, yep. which we're not going to disagree with because I don't, I don't know <laughs> all the ins and the outs, but... Nope. But having said that, um, the Dynamite is down four starters. Uh, so they're down a few players tonight. But again, um, I don't think that has anything to do with um, the way the, the Beaver Valley Nighthawks are dominating tonight's hockey game. Yeah. They, they were just ready to play at a higher level than the Dynamiters were able to play. Abs and that's not to say that the Dynamiters can't play at that higher level. It's just that they, they weren't ready to start, start this hockey no. game at that level. <laughs> Now anything can happen in Junior B hockey, so we look forward. We to look forward period. to this third period. Yeah, and I, and I have to commend the Dynamiter fans and the Cranbrook fans. Yes, for coming out tonight. It's a very cold evening here in, in Cranbrook, and we have a really nice crowd. Yes, we do. So a lot better than I anticipated. So this is great to see. I was expecting 12 to 20 people myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for about 100, but 540 and counting is pretty really good. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So yep. Josh Locker, thanks for coming out. Thank Talking you. Guest uh, during bloggers blur. <laughs> I'll start calling it that. I think that's catchy. <laughs> anyway, we'll get ready for the third period. We'll bring back in Troy. Uh, Troy what's, what's Troy's last name? <laughs> Troy uh, Bobak. Bobak. Yes. The play-by-play. -play. <laughs> Josh Lockhart, Kimberly Bloggers.